If you've ever bought a computer, chances are it came with the home version of Windows, and if it was any time recently, it would be Windows 10 Home. But you might know that there are other versions of Windows. There's Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Education, Enterprise, and while obviously not many people are gonna need Enterprise or Education for their personal computers, obviously, you might be wondering if it's worth it to get Windows 10 Pro and what the differences are and who would want that. So that's exactly what we're gonna go over in this video. And believe it or not, there aren't actually a ton of differences between Windows 10 Pro and Home, but the differences that are there might be significant for some of you, so it's still worth noting all that there are. So first of all, let's talk about Windows 10 Home. This edition costs $119. Now, I would actually say that Windows 10 Home has 99%, if not 100% of the features that any normal person would need, especially if they're not a professional. There's nothing you would not be able to do with Windows 10 Home. It's not like the previous versions where they had, you know, Windows Home Premium with Vista and the Ultimate version, which had extra features. There's no features that are missing from here that you would really need unless you were a professional of some kind, which we'll get to. The only real limit when it comes to Windows 10 Home is the amount of RAM you can use, which is a whopping 128 gigabytes, which is less than what you get on Pro, but way more than probably anyone would ever need. So I don't even know any professional users, even in like a server that would need 128 gigabytes. So that's not even a real limitation. The other thing is that it doesn't have BitLocker where Windows 10 Pro does, and that's really the only feature I would consider maybe something that a normal person would use. Now, BitLocker, if you're not aware, is a feature that allows you to encrypt your entire hard drive, which is great for laptops, which means that you have to type in a password before you even boot up the computer, so even if someone takes out the hard drive, they still can't access your data. However, that being said, a lot of portable devices do actually have this feature enabled, even if it is Windows 10 Home, so you might not miss it anyway. Now, since Windows 10 Home doesn't really have anything that Windows 10 Pro doesn't have, so from now on, we're just gonna basically talk about the features that Pro has that Home doesn't. It wouldn't really make sense to talk about the stuff that Home doesn't have, just to mention it again later. So what is the deal with Windows 10 Pro then? Well, first of all, we can mention the price. It's $199, which is $80 more than Windows Home at $119. So does it have as many features to justify it? And really only you can decide that. The first thing we can mention is the RAM. Now I mentioned on Home it's 128 gigabytes, which is already more than you would need. And on Pro and up, it's two terabytes. I don't know anyone who would ever need two terabytes of RAM. I don't even think you could fit that into any motherboard, even if you wanted to. As for the real other features, the first one we could talk about is so-called Hyper-V virtualization. And this basically just allows native support for running virtual computers on Windows. So you can actually do this with third-party software like VMware or VirtualBox, but with this, you can do it right through Windows and it basically just lets you run multiple instances of either Windows or another operating system and have it isolated from the regular operating system, whether this is for testing, developing, or maybe even some kind of security where you wanna test some software, you're not really sure if it's safe. The next feature has to do with remote desktop. Now, all versions of Windows support remote desktop in the sense that you can control other devices with it. However, only Pro and other editions above that can be controlled through remote desktop. So you could use a Windows Home PC to control your work PC, for example, if it's Pro, but you can't do it the other way around. But again, there is third-party software that will allow you to do this even if you don't have Windows 10 Pro, so it's not a huge deal, but where it would be a big deal maybe is if you're in a company and you just want native support, you want everything to just work, it's gonna work a lot better than having to install third-party software and worrying about all that on all your computers. Now, the next feature is probably something that the average person would be able to use, and that is that the Windows 10 Pro version allows you to defer updates. So Windows 10 Home basically doesn't allow you to delay updates, maybe for a few hours, 
but Windows 10 Pro allows you to do it for up to a month or more, especially the Enterprise, which allows you to delay it indefinitely. Now, that being said, I would never actually suggest anyone disable Windows updates altogether. You always wanna keep Windows up to date, especially for security reasons, but if you are a professional who uses Windows, then it could be helpful to delay this in case you are worried about the update breaking something that is work critical. And this could be especially so for the major updates they do twice a year, like the Fall Creators update, which did break a lot of stuff until maybe a couple weeks later, so it might be worth it to delay it until they have all the kinks worked out. Now the rest of the few features are probably not gonna be useful to almost anyone except in a business environment, but we can still talk about them. The first one is domain join, which means that you can use the Windows 10 Pro version to connect to a domain like at work, which basically just allows your computer to be controlled by like an admin or something and absorb all those policies and just connect with the other computers in that network. If you're not doing this for work, unless you set it up for your home or something, this isn't gonna be very useful to you. Kind of related to that, Windows 10 Pro does have the group policy editor, which allows admins to mass control configurations on many different computers in a network, but it also does have the ability to control local policy. So that means that with the group policy editor, you can actually change a lot of features that normally you wouldn't be able to do, even if you're not in a work network or something. So actually this can be a neat feature if you tend to be a power user who really likes to customize hidden features that no one really cares about. You can use the group policy editor to do that. Another interesting feature with the pro version is it has a feature called assigned access which basically allows you to restrict the computer or a single user from being able to use anything except one app. So this could be a good example if it's a kiosk or something in a mall and you only want one app running on it, you don't want people to access the start menu or something while it's running, then that would be a good example of that. Or maybe if it's a sign-in desk at your work then obviously, again, you don't want people to be running other programs, you just want them to run the sign-in software. The next feature has to do with Internet Explorer. I bet some of you have not used that in years, especially with Edge coming out in Windows 10, but it has what is called Internet Explorer Enterprise Mode, which basically just is a compatibility mode for like ancient corporate networks that still use web apps that rely on like Internet Explorer 7 and 8, which is, I mean, truly ancient, but some of them just refuse to update and if you are running a new version of Windows, it probably doesn't support that crap anymore. So they had to implement this enterprise mode, which just allows you to run these old junky apps. It just, they just needed to do that. And then finally with the pro version, you're gonna get the ability to use what is called Windows Store for Business, which kind of allows you to buy a lot of different app licenses. Like if you have, I don't know, 10 business computers or something, you can buy an app and then distribute it easily to all those computers through this Windows App Store for business, which would be different than the personal App Store, which is assuming that you're only gonna put it on the one computer. So it's just a little bit more convenient for business cases. So those are really the only big differences between Home and Pro, and I personally do like to use Pro, just because it does have a couple of those features I do like, like the ability to defer updates for more than like a day if I want to. Also that remote desktop, might not need it that often, but it's still nice to have. And then you also have BitLocker, which I do like, and then that group policy editor, which does come in handy sometimes when you want to change like a very specific feature that normally someone wouldn't even know about. Though we're not quite done yet because interestingly, Microsoft announced another edition of Windows called Windows 10 Pro for workstations, which is supposed to be a even higher end version of Windows 10 Pro. The idea of this one is supposedly that it would allow you to use server grade hardware, like super high end hardware. For example, if you wanna run a motherboard that has more than one CPU, this will support up to four CPUs and up to six terabytes of RAM. I mean, I don't know, again, who would need that, but the ability is there. The other difference is that the Pro for Workstation version will support what is called REFS, or Resilient File System, which is different than NTFS, which is just a probably superior file system that might replace NTFS at some point. And if you don't know what any of that means, then it wouldn't matter to you anyway. But it has been a little bit controversial because this feature was actually in Windows 10 Pro, 
and they removed it just so they could add it in to this more expensive new operating system version. Microsoft hasn't really talked about many of the other main differences between this Pro for Workstation and Pro version, and I don't even think it's out yet. They just kind of mentioned they were making it, and that was it. So maybe I will make another video if there's enough differences, but I probably don't even see myself getting it unless there's some killer new feature that it includes. Besides that though, I guess we can quickly just kind of mention the other versions of Windows besides Home Pro, just out of curiosity. For example, there's Windows 10 Enterprise, which is mainly designed to be deployed on like many, many computers, and that just allows much easier use of volume licensing and direct control from one central admin or something like that. Then the education version is very similar to Enterprise, except focused on like institutions of education, so universities, school, and that just focuses again on academic volume licensing instead of corporate. Though another interesting one you may not have heard of is Windows IoT Core. Now, this is actually meant to be for like Internet of Things devices. It's a very basic, basic version of Windows 10 that will possibly be run on things like Raspberry Pis. You can actually do that. And just very, very low power devices, basically just to be able to run an operating system. And then there is also the newer Windows 10 S, which is really stupid. I've talked about this in another video. It's basically like a much more locked down version of Windows 10 that literally only lets you run Windows Store apps. So if you ever see Windows 10 S, just don't even bother getting that at all. So I guess that's pretty much it. You should now hopefully know which you would want, Windows 10 Pro or Home. And then we also at least mention the names of the other editions so you at least know that they're there. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Which version do you use? We can talk about that down in the comments. If you want to keep watching, I've got some other videos right here you can just click on. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.